Hey, you are listening to Abyss Gazing, a horror podcast where we celebrate all things spooky and mental health. And I'm the one that's put you through all of this Omen series. <laughs> Your co-host, Mark. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> Billy, who had to put up with him. I'm so glad that you, you admitted it, man. Uh, I feel like Phantasm was a little bit of like when, when we decided to do that series, it was a little bit of a mutual thing because we both really liked and wanted to see where the series went when we did it last year with Gone Cold. I'm your other co-host, Josh, and I am the one that, that is been dreading getting behind these this microphone for the last few weeks. I mean, you've put me through some bad movies, too, so it's only fair. Uh, I'm not done putting you through bad movies yet. <sighs> I mean, now we also have Billy, so Billy can also kind of put us through some bad movies as well. You know, this is true. Definitely. At if some point, we can just yeah. share the, the love going around. But uh, we are talking about <laughs> Omen for The Awakening, which was a made for television movie in 1994. Yeah, and, and you can feel it's from 1994. Was it 94? Was it? <clears throat> no, I guess so. I, I'm going to ask. I'm going to start with this question. Did anybody else feel like it was like a problem child kind of movie at the beginning? If you didn't know I, what it was Omen when you were walking into it, it was just like, what in the world? So I'm going to answer your question. Yes. For one, for two, I am wrong. It is 1991 ha. that this movie <laughs> came out. Also, I believe Problem Child was 1990. So this movie probably made in direct response because of Problem Child. Exactly. So I've seen the little girl and something else horror based. I just can't remember what. I literally have IMDb here, so I can tell you. Sweet. Maybe. Where the heck is she? That's I've got IMDb. I'm looking to. <laughs> Asia Viria. She was also in uh, episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Goosebumps. Goosebumps. Um, so, yeah, she's got some horror ties there, you know. She also was in an episode of Tales from the Crypt Keeper. So she's done and later in life would go on at the, the tail end of the decade to go on and do a couple other horror films, but I don't know what else I saw. Her in. It just, it kind of felt like they went, okay, we're going to make an omen, but we're not going to do a remake, but we are <laughs> going to do a remake, but we're not like a, copy my homework but don't make it obvious kind of thing no so do either one of you know how the the hellraiser uh sequels from five to ten were made to keep the licensing not the reason why how they were made so basically dimension had pre-existing scripts that they didn't know what to do with and in order to as you were saying mark to keep the license, they basically had to make a Hellraiser movie every few years. So they would actually take these scripts that they didn't know what to do with, rewrite them to somehow include Pinhead and the the uh, the, uh, the Lament configuration and Le, Le Machon and like the entire mythology. And that's why when you watch a lot of those. Uh, those those sequels they feel really sloppy or they feel like uh, kind of not quite in place with the rest of them and that's how this movie feels it feels like they to billy's point they they attempted to make a problem child styled film and had a script that existed and then they were like oh yeah we have the license to do an omen series what if we did that <laughs> It really feels like now that we're on number four, like they haven't ever really figured out how to handle the Omen series completely successfully since the original. 
so here's the thing is that the omen series never should have been cons- ever considered or conceived to be a franchise that's the reason why you are running into the problems that you're running into with these sequels that's why the second one was boring that's why the third one had had its interesting moments but even coming into uh this right here this fourth one it feels messy and it feels like they don't quite know what to do with it they're continuing that trajectory of the other sequels i mean to me it felt like hey look over here we're going to try to do omen uh we got to figure out how to expand damien even though he's already dead and at what point did damien have a kid that's the thing that like bothered me about it was like I just kept waiting for them to bring up Damien. And then they were like, oh yeah, Delia has connections to the de- Damien and the devil. And he is actually the the she's actually the seed of of the, the Antichrist. Like, I don't know. To me, like given how like dramatic and like definitive the ending of part three feels it feels so out of left field to make that connection it feels like they 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 ham-fisted that that connection way too hard and the other thing that bothered me was yeah uh delia carried her own twin and then they implanted it in the mom without her knowing it's like how the way they did the story they made delia out to be almost like pestilence there is like a point in the movie where they they like try to like even say that she is like pestilence yeah. but i don't honestly understand how you take something as interesting as the antichrist and mess it up in in this way because I don't know about you guys, like overall, did you guys just feel mostly bored with this movie? <laughs> because the '90s was known for great movie writing. <laughs> uh, I mean, Schindler's List came out two years later. Oscar, Jurassic Park. There weren't a lot of excellent written movies that came out of the '90s. Sure, there were some, but not Good a lot. Will Hunting, Clerks, uh, Scream. Clerks that, yeah. The faculty, need I go on? The faculty was not. (laughs) The faculty was not. I thought Goodwill Hunting was like early 90s or early 80s. I fucking can't talk. I thought early 2000. There we go. 97, my dude. Um... So if you had to rate them, me, it'd be Omen 1. Or Omen, Omen three, Omen two, and then Omen four. Yeah, this these original series because we're not even getting into we'll we'll get into the the remake and the the uh the prequel in the next two episodes. But yeah, that's where I am. Like I I knew this movie was gonna be bad coming into it, but I was not prepared for the level of train wreck accompanied these 99 minutes <laughs> i mean at least we got to go to somewhat of a circus the, it which, was a psychic fair yeah it was, was a psychic, psychic fair, fair. I, I i mean that's, like that, the circus. that's one of the best <laughs> scenes in the movie because it's yeah. just like everything that goes wrong can go wrong and people are setting on fire that are just like i'm gonna stroll through the, oh god i'm on fire it's <laughs> honestly it puppets Honestly, let's stay at the psychic fair for for just a few minutes because that is probably the most interesting part in the movie. I think that when you have that like whole other like connection of you know the spirituality that kind of gets brought into this, because these th- first three movies we've we've seen either Christianity and atheism, like we've never kind of seen anything else. And so I, I love the fact that they're trying new ideas with these franchise with the story, but then like five minutes after the whole entire like psychic, like build up of the fair, they, they killed the babysitter who had the connection and the tie to that world. Mm-hmm. 
And I was like, you just took the most interesting thing that you had to say in this movie and brutally murdered it. Why? Well, why was she so weirded out by healing crystals and psychic fairies? Are you are you talking about the babysitter? Or are you talking about Delia? Delia. Delia. I, I think it goes back to that whole phenomenon of I think it goes back to the whole phenomena of the original and the original omen where they're on the way to the church and Damien like sees the cathedral like monarchy or like sin like signage, iconography, whatever you want to call it. And he starts to kind of have that like freak out attack. I think it's kind of the same way, but it doesn't make sense because like the whole concepts and the like everything yeah. like religion wise that like you know satanism stands for is essentially to draw attention away from jesus and god and the holy spirit and scripture yeah and I, that's what i said go go back to what i said earlier this movie felt like a you can copy my homework but don't make it obvious because scene I mean, for scene, it's very close to the original, but it, they change stuff to like psychic fairs and magic crystals instead of uh, going to the Catholic Church for baptism. Well, job. Go ahead, Billy. Well, I mean, I I was taking that they were doing the crystals kind of like a spiritual thing versus just crystals. They were, hey, this is more of this is what we believe in, and the psychics being able to you know predict and. The picture, seeing the auras and all that, just a different belief than just the church. I I think I think maybe I'm being misunderstood here. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the reason maybe. that I bring it up, the uh, I think that was that is fascinating to me. I love the exploration of spirituality in this movie. I think it's probably <laughs> literally the only redeemable quality about it. And it's what makes the entire, like, uh, you know, the whole orb thing. Like, I thought that was fascinating. I, I loved all of that stuff. But the reason that I bring it up to Mark, uh, that I feel like it feels out of place, is because when you have a that scene in the original Omen where it is him, mm -hmm. him freaking out about entering into the church, it's this idea that he, here you have this the son of the devil getting ready to step on holy ground. Exactly. Where that same principle can't necessarily be applied to crystals and psychics and stuff along those lines. Like that, that just, it doesn't translate the same, doesn't hit the same. And it right. feels weird that they would try to do that. Well, I mean, I was taking it and not necessarily this word. You could probably come up with a better word for me but the crystal is kind of more acting like a deity for it versus like you have the statues of God and Jesus and all that. The crystals are their symbols of their spirituality and all. And that was what was affecting it. Yes. But it doesn't, it, to me, it's like, it doesn't, I don't know to me, yeah. maybe, maybe this is just it me. It just like, didn't fit. It, it didn't, didn't fit. fit. Yeah. It didn't it fit didn't. whatsoever. And I think it didn't fit because like, okay, if you're going to go that route, with the, saying go ahead mark the only way you could make it fit is that the crystals were supposed to promote healing and all this other stuff if they carried through with a more prominent story of her being pestilence causing disease and sickness and things and people around her however she did it because they talk about it a couple of times i could see it working that way but they didn't make it clear enough that that was the case to begin with right so it makes the crystal hatred not make any sense right yeah i agree and i mean also like even if you were going to go the route of like billy right. with like it being a deity you would still need to bring it up like people come into a story about the antichrist presumably already knowing about at least some rough edges of who jesus christ is Right. And so you have that, that well, that established uh, roots. Whereas, like, the, when you get into religions that are based in other countries and other beliefs, it's not, it's not always common knowledge. And so I feel like in order for that to hit as hard, it would have had to, uh, they would have had to explore that a little bit more. But again, you kill it off. 
not even halfway through the movie. I was so pissed, man. She was like the most interesting, compelling character in this movie. And, and this movie had a chance with something else that we had mentioned in one of the other podcasts. They had her in an elementary school. Mm -hmm. We had mentioned that. And she but they was didn't, fucking they, people up. Yeah, but they didn't continue with that route or didn't even do much with it. It was kind of like, yeah, she beat him up. Then she made him pee on himself going up the ladder, which I, I started laughing at that. And, uh, you know, and then it was that. That was it. Where well, to me, they, I thought they could add more storylines to that also. They sure they showed with her much more. Uh, they leaned more into her being evil than they did in the omen it's or even most evil. of the omen too evil. <laughs> also i want to throw this out there the babysitter's name was was josephine um i for i for, did not have that in my notes but it is josephine played wonderfully by uh and and hern and also yeah mark to your point i agree and the dude that she talked to about her aura being brown and black and it's like it's infecting things went on to play i think a watcher in the highlander tv series wow yes uss knowledge well uh <laughs> on that i will also throw you out some other useless knowledge uh michael lerner is in this movie plays earl would later go on to do uh a bit part in elf also in Godzilla, he was in X Men: Days of Future Past. Which uh, one was Earl? He was the, the he was the detective guy. Oh yeah, he's done um, tons of stuff. He's a great character actor. Uh, oh. And also, just want to throw this out there as a Twin Peaks fan, Don S. Davis is in this movie very briefly as the uh, gentleman Jake Madison. But he's like a blink and he miss it cameo. Also, he was in Stargate SG1. Yeah, there was. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. who that dude was. <laughs> that's who most people know him from. But he did have a very tiny part in Twin Peaks. If you or someone you know is listening to this podcast right now and you're struggling with suicide, addiction, self harm, or depression, we encourage you guys to please reach out. This is the heartbeat of why we do what we do. Suicide is currently the 10th leading cause of death in the United States, and as of this recording, there are 132 suicides that take place each and every day on American soil. And when you scale back internationally, there are 800,000 successful suicides. That is one death roughly every 40 seconds. So if you or someone you know is struggling, you guys can go to victimsandvillains.net forward slash hope. That resource is going to be right in the description wherever you guys are currently listening or streaming this. There you'll find resources that include the National Suicide Lifeline, which is 1-800-273-8255. You can also text HELP to 741-741. We also have a plethora of other resources, including churches, getting connected with counselors, LGBT resources like the Trevor Project, and also Veteran Hotline as well. Please, if you hear nothing else in the show, understand that you, yes, you listening to this right now, have value and worth. We get it. Suicide, depression, mental health, these are hard topics, and the stigma around them doesn't make it any easier. But please, consider the resources right in the descriptions below, wherever you guys are listening, because... Once again, you have value and you have worth. So please stay with us. Why you gotta insult this part like that? Are you taking offense to that? Uh, Stargate was hard to watch. That series was dumb. And I'm sure I just pissed off a lot of people with that one. Yes, you did. Don't worry. I'll edit that out. What? I mean... You, really, you realize which one Earl is, though, right, Mark? Do you realize which one Earl is in the movie? The guy that he showed the picture of? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's the one that got to get hit by some balls. 
Mm-hmm. Construction yeah. ball hit him. Oh yeah. <laughs> after two seconds after they showed it in the store window. Wrecking ball. Death by wrecking ball. <laughs> yeah. How did I mean how did you guys feel about like the, the connections that they tried to like uh, to the original trilogy with this one? I know we've kind of touched on it. <laughs> I think it, I thought they were strained in reaching, honestly. It was just like every other made for TV movie and half assed. I mean, the <laughs> one part that I kind of enjoyed that they flipped more than usual and not that it was a big thing was um, they were like, oh, she's going to kill the baby. Well, no, she's going to protect the baby this time, not try to kill it. That's because I, it was Damien. Yeah. Because, and it from was her. future Damien. I did so. think it was weird in this one. So I, I watched, so we're recording these podcasts back to back. And yeah. I watched the remake before this one. And I watched the remake yesterday because it felt appropriate to watch a movie about <laughs> the Antichrist on Easter. So. Yeah. Uh, but in that movie, we'll talk about it in next week's episode, but there is a subplot where like Robert and his wife have a child outside of Damien again. And I thought that it was weird that in this one, this came 15 years before the remake, that this was a subplot that they had where Dahlia also had a child. And... Dear Lord, well, I hate that. or had us had a sister. Sorry, Dahlia had a twin. Twin, that's Some right. Some sort of weird thing with twins, where Which, the twin is born with the twin. Uh, it, this movie just tries to like overcomplicate that entire thing mm. way too hard. Like a lot of movies. Yeah. No, no. Like a lot of movies. Like don't. There are some movies that definitely do try, like, don't get me wrong, but this movie, like, tried way too hard because it had, like, it felt like it had a direction for, like, the first 45, 50 minutes. Then it kind of, like, narrowed down. We're like, we're going to introduce this, like, tough detective dude, and then he's going to die, and then mom's going to become detective and find out the truth about Dahlia. Like, Delia, whatever you say your name is, it's just uh, this. The, but by the time just, like mom steps in, like it's kind of like it's already a little bit too complicated for its own good. I mean, it's about as deep as a puddle, so it's not exactly the most complicated of things. It's just, it's the what, what is it? The um, great value omen. And, <laughs> and what were what were Damien's followers? What were their names again? What's the group's called? Was it uh, like, Disciples of the Watch? I think is what it was. Yeah, that and wasn't I mean, until they, the third one that they said that they never I, said who they were in the first two. I realized that, but that's not where I was going with this. It, they, they skimmed over really quick that the Disciples of the Watch are still there using the Doctor. Just. Like, yeah, he's a disciple. That's how all this happened. Done. That in that's comic horse, horse crap. It, in comic books, that would be called plot armor. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at this point, they're just they're 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 just reaching really bad. They're like, <clears throat> you know, and like here's the thing is like the omens one of those series is one of those films that like it's so good that it stands on its own really well. There's literally no need for it go to go back to the well to kind of keep coming. Now, I'm saying this before. I was having seen First Omen. I've heard a, nothing but good things about it. So maybe for the first time in over 40 years, we're going to get a good Omen movie because this one was real rough to sit through. I, I hope so. Well, the first one is good. The first one's great. Thank you. But that's the only like good one in this series so far. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, had the third one, as we established last week, the third one not been for Sam Neill, this that movie yeah. would have been not as, as edible <laughs> as it was. 
if the ending had been a little bit different and less just like so, you lose game so, over. Game so over. if you had to sit there and watch <laughs> a movie and suffer through it, this one or the last phantasm? Oh. <laughs> uh, you, you, right? Man. You got me, right, Josh? You understand what I'm saying? It's like, which would pick your poison? Which one? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. In all fairness to the Phantasm, they were all written by the same guy, except yeah. for like the last, I think the last one was the only one that wasn't. Right. Yeah. But yes. the Damien's, the, the Omens are all written by different people. Yeah. It's all completely different teams and crews. I am curious though about the Damien TV series. I heard that was pretty good. Kind of like Hannibal was supposedly really good too. I again I think this I think that there is a richness to this character and to the lore of the thorns it just needs to be done in a way that is that is made interesting because I I feel like a lot of the films a lot of these sequels are feel like they're they're just trying to instead of further the plot or further the expand the mythology they're just kind of going Trying to hit the, hit those like simple beats of, of the what made the first film so good. Yeah, mm-hmm. trying to kind of rehash the same thing in different ways. Yeah, and I'm just I am not about it. Like, mm-hmm. don't, don't get me wrong. Like, I feel like every every franchise goes through low points, and by the time you're like four or five films in, sometimes they're it's just a slug fest but then you have like redeemable films like halloween 4 and uh you know friday the 13th 3 and you know scream and you know stuff like that like i, I think there's a there's still franchises evil dead's a great example you know evil but, dead hasn't had a bad entry though no, no, they have I, not. But I'm saying so you, like, you, you know, can't you can't use that as a comparison. There's very few series like Evil Dead that don't have a bad entry. I I could if I really wanted to, but I at this point I feel like we're we're trying to stretch this episode out a little bit more than it needs to be. So anything else you guys feel like we have to, left to comment on this movie? Omen 4 sucked. Watch the original and be done with it. Yeah. Don't waste your time. <laughs> but although three, can... although three might be worth watching for Sam Neill, he did an excellent job. I th- I would even go as far as like Sam Neill does an excellent job in that movie, but I would even recommend that to people that are fans of political thrillers because it's a decent political thriller. Yeah, it's it's more that than it is horror. Or, yeah. All right. Well, before we get into social medias, uh, you guys can stream all of the Omen series now on Hulu. This is not a sponsored ad. Just if you're curious about them, go check them out. Um, but Horrific Hope is going to be this weekend at the Alamo Draft House in Winchester, Virginia. And we have two amazing nights of films programmed for you guys, April 5th and 6th. want to shout out our sponsors, Fierce Literature, Coven Salon, Worlds, es- Worlds Away Escape, Raven Couture and uh, sorry, Conjure and Tin Top Art. Mark, where can we find you online? Arguing with you about whether a movie sucked or not. (laughs) (laughs) That just needs to be a sticker. (laughs) Uh, Billy, my my dude, where can we find you? You can find me on Facebook, WTaber3. All right, and you guys can find me. Uh, also, more links and information for all of our sponsors, all of our films, and to get tickets are in the show notes below to check out Horrific Hope Film Festival this upcoming weekend. Uh, but you guys can find me. I am on Letterbox at Captain Nostalgia. You guys can find uh, older episodes where it's just me and Mark, me and Mark arguing, and now you guys can find episodes of the three of us wherever you guys get your podcast from. Which uh, consists of me and Josh arguing and so we're kind of <laughs> laughing. <laughs> you guys can uh, also follow our parent company, Victims and Villains. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, 
Twitch, YouTube, and wherever you guys get your podcasts from, as well as Patreon. So until next time, remember, the longer you gaze into the abyss, the more the abyss gazes back into you.